Hi, bio peeps. It's Mrs. Shannon here. And what I'm going to do is um, do a screencast on protein synthesis. I'm going to divide this up into two different um, screencasts. The first part's going to review DNA and go into transcription a little bit. And the second part is going to um, go into translation, the second part of uh, the central dogma. So I know you had your self-paced um, slides that you worked on, um, and that was a nice introduction. And then you were able to do a case study. Um, I also had videos, the Amoeba Sisters videos um, in the weekly agenda. So if you needed some help with protein synthesis, you could always refer back to it, even though it was in your slides. Um, is And I also have a code on wheel. So I'm just letting you know that there's other resources for you. Um, on the daily announcement, I'll go through it a little bit more for you too. But protein synthesis, um, remember, synthesize. If you synthesize something, you're making it. And in this case, you're making proteins. One of the four biomolecules we've talked about. And in fact, this is my favorite one. Um, and I think I've told you uh, that I compare them to the minions of the body because they are so important for displaying your traits, um, characteristics about you. And without the proteins, you wouldn't be here. <clears throat> Pardon me. So they kind of do a little bit of everything. But remember, um, proteins need to be made. They need to be synthesized. And so we start with the instructions from DNA. Uh, we talked about DNA at the beginning of the semester. Um, they code for the characteristics of the organisms. Um, but they don't actually do the work. It's the proteins or the minions that go out and do the work. Okay? Um, and it looks like I cut this off here, so I'm going to have to go back through it before I post it. Um, and basically, a section of DNA that codes for a protein is known as a gene. Okay? So a gene is just the section of the DNA that codes for a particular trait. So proteins are polymers. Remember, poly means that it's made of more than one unit. The monomers, the single units of a protein, is called amino acids. Now we're going to talk about another term that we sometimes call proteins coming up, um, a polypeptide, okay? And that's due to those peptide bonds between the amino acids. So if you can think back to last semester when we were in the hallway and we, uh, we formed our peptide bonds when we squeezed the water through our um, dehydration synthesis, that's how it gets its name. Um, there are 20 different amino acids, and these 20 different amino acids come together in different combinations to do all kinds of different jobs. Um, each combination forms a different shape, and the shape dictates its function. Um, but they all have the basic NCC, um, the NCC here as their foundation, but they all differ in their side chain. Um, if you don't remember that, if you're going, what the heck are you talking about, Mrs. Shannon? Don't stress about recognizing this structure with the H's and the N's. But you need to know that most of it is the same. There's just one little part of each of the amino acid that's different, okay? And that gives it its unique properties. Now, when we have all these different amino acids coming together through that dehydration synthesis, um, then you have what's called a polypeptide forming. And if you hear someone shouting, there's other people in my house, so sorry about that. Okay, so remember DNA is the instructions, it begins the process. It's found inside the nucleus. Um, now proteins though, they're made from these instructions, but they're made at the ribosomes. And so that's a big problem. Ribosomes may be free in the cytoplasm, which is that jelly-like substance, or it's attached to the surface of rough ER, and all that does is it's, a, it's another organelle in the cell, and it helps transport um, the uh, proteins to where they need to go, especially if they're going to be exiting the cell. Now, we covered replication. It says last semester. It was actually at the beginning of this semester, so ignore that part of it. Um, the rest of this PowerPoint is going to be over transcription, and we're actually going to do next week's <laughs> translation right after this. But here is a nice little diagram that shows sort of the overall process where we have the DNA inside the nucleus, and the DNA can be transcribed into RNA, which can actually leave the nucleus and form the protein. 
RNA is the link between DNA and proteins, okay? So in order for that DNA to code for the protein, it needs an, inter um, an intermediate molecule, and that's where RNA comes into play. So really quickly about RNA, just as a review, I know you had a DNA versus RNA um, uh, ed puzzle, so I'm not going to, I'll just kind of go through these quickly. Um, DNA, you can think of it as the master planner. RNA is just a copy of the DNA. Now, the big thing is, is that DNA has two sides to it, okay? It's um, a double helix, whereas RNA only has one. In addition, RNA has a sugar ribose and DNA has a different sugar. Um, one of the biggest things, and I didn't really cover it much, is that RNA contains the base uracil. Um, uracil is only found in RNA. It is not found in DNA. Instead, DNA has thymine, okay? So when we talked about DNA and DNA replication, we talked about how A always matched up with T. Now, when we're going from DNA to RNA, we're going to have to substitute that T with a U because there is no T in RNA. Um, and then, uh, like I said before, the RNA molecule is single-stranded. Now, that's really important and, and, and is a big reason why we need RNA. Um, before I go into that, let me just show you. So it's just basically like half of a ladder, like half of a DNA. Um, there are three types of RNA. There's messenger RNA. Uh, messenger RNA copies the DNA code, okay? Um, and so inside the nucleus, that's what's going to be copying the DNA. Ribosomal RNA makes up the ribosomes. And then transfer RNA, tRNA, carries the amino acids to the ribosome. So these are going to be found out in the um, cytoplasm. Um, messenger RNA will start out in the nucleus and then head out to the cytoplasm, okay? We're going to focus mostly on mRNA and tRNA at this level. Now, the cool thing is, is it's single-sided, so it has a long straight chain of nucle um, nucleotides. And because it's single-sided, it can fit through these little openings called nuclear pores in the nucleus. So what happens is it copies the DNA, kind of like replication happens. Um, except don't forget, you're going to an RNA. So instead of matching up an A to a T, you're going to match up an A to a U. Once you have that single strand, it's small enough that it can leave the little gaps in the nucleus and head out to the cytoplasm. Um, so I said that A is going to bond with U going into an RNA molecule. C and G will stay the same. Okay, so here's an example. And I'm blocking the bottom here. But it was just another one. So the mRNA carries the information for a specific protein. Its code is there. Whatever it has copied from the DNA, it's going to dictate its protein. Um, and when you're looking at like mutations and things like that that happen, and, and we were talking in the patient case study, one of them, um, that's sometimes determined in that um, going from the DNA to the RNA phase, in the transcription phase. It can happen in other spots too, but that's one spot where mutations can happen. Um, they're generally made of a 500 to 1,000 nucleotides long. And so remember, when we're looking at nucleotides, it's the bases that dictate which one they are. Now, they form what's called a codon. A codon is three bases. Um, and that's going to dictate when it's translated um, into a protein, that's going to dictate what amino acid binds with it. The codons code for the amino acids. And so the um, ribosomal RNA, I'm going to kind of skip through this. It's a single strand here too, but it's what forms the um, ribosomes. But I don't want to spend too much time on it. There's other things that I, I, I would like us to cover instead. Just the important thing again, and I'll say this again and again, on DNA, A, if you're doing replication, A goes with T, C goes with G. Now on RNA, A would match up to a U. So if it was an A on the DNA and it's being transcribed, it would match up to a U. 
Now, if it was a T on the DNA, it would match up to an A. RNA does have an A, so that's okay. Okay, so when the DNA is being copied to the RNA, whoopsie, go back here, and we are going to follow Shargaff's rules. Okay, A to U, we substitute the T in, C to G, G's to C's. Again, like I said, it doesn't matter if it's a T on the DNA, it, it can still match up with the A because RNA does have it. So, if you are matching this up, ACC, GTT, AGT, if you're trying to figure out what the RNA strand will be, um, try doing it on a piece of scrap paper. Um, sometimes that helps to underline them in your groups of three. So here it's like three without an underline, three with, three without. You can think of that as your codons, and sometimes that helps. So I'm going to pause here for a minute. You can pause the screen too, and then when you're ready, go on. Okay. <laughs> okay, so hopefully you had that the A matched up with the U, because there's no T in RNA. C to G, cars in the garage, C to G, G to C. Now it's okay, there was a T here, but T to A, T to A, and then U C A. So I think this is the last of the slides. So this is the end of part one. This covered the DNA types of RNA as well as um, transcription. So for the second screencast, I'm going to pick up with translation, review the whole process together, um, and show kind of how that all connects with the central dogma and show you how to use a codon chart. So if this helps you more than the amino amoeba sisters, feel free to use it. Um, I hope it does, okay? Take care.